Hello, I am Seamus Donahue of Eve University, and this is the first episode of the February 2018 edition of How to Survive Eve Online. Before I begin, I want to give a shout out to Paul Suarez Jr., the creator of the YouTube video series How to Survive Minecraft, which is what inspired me to start my own YouTube channel and make instructional videos of my own. The purpose of this series is to emulate what How to Survive Minecraft was to me, a demonstration of gameplay starting at almost the very beginning, presented to people who have never played the game before. The first part will be the new player experience, and what it consisted of changed around 2015 or 2016. This will be my first time recording this series since then. In my opinion, CCP Games, or Crowd Control Productions, has done a very good job of crafting an in-game tutorial that holds the player's hand and guides them through the interface and basic tasks and objectives. Unfortunately, due to the time required, it makes for a much better playing experience than watching experience. So for this first episode, I'll be speed running through the new player experience. I do want to assure you though, that if you play through this yourself, the game itself will guide you through almost everything you need to know. I'll point out any exceptions that I think are important as I go along. The point I want to get across in this video is that EVE Online isn't as intimidating for new players nowadays as it was in the past. To save more time, native English speakers may find that I'm perfectly understandable even if the YouTube video player is set to double playback speed. You can find that option in the lower right corner. Also for brevity, I've skipped most of the character creation process, which isn't important to gameplay. Uh, for this run-through though, I've chosen a Galente character, and the school that I've chosen is Center for Advanced Studies. Uh, finally, just as a matter of personal preference, I'm going to change some of the defaults in the Escape menu. Uh, so first of all, Display and Graphics, I like to turn off Camera Shake, Camera Bobbing, I like to invert the zoom direction, um, I guess I could leave Dynamic Camera Movement on, post-processing none, shader quality low, level of detail quality low, I'll leave the texture quality high, shadow quality disabled. Uh, let's see. Uh, for the audio, I'm going to turn the UI speech level down to zero because I don't want to be interrupted uh, by the in-game voiceovers while I do this. And... General settings, open radial menu with, I'll use the middle mouse button. And is there anything else? That's about it. All right. With that being done, with that being done, let's get into it. And here is my alt character, video maker Seamus Dunahoo. Oh, one minor note about the name. Um, so you have two different fields for creating the name of your character. Uh, the first field can have up to one space in it. And the way it's going to string this together is it's going to take this field, then add a space, then add this field. If the second field is blank, it's going to randomize it for you. So just so that you're aware of that. If you only want one word in your name, leave the top field blank. All right, so going into the game with the, for the first time with this character. And like I said, I'm going to be speed running through it, but I will mention what the tutorial will be doing as uh, we go through each stage. It's just there's going to be a lot to go through. All right. Skipping through this. Alright, so the operations info panel. That's this thing on the left. How to rotate your camera. Left click and drag the background in space. Which is why I set the radial menu to middle mouse button. Because I don't want to try to rotate the camera and accidentally bring up the radial menu. Uh, zoom and pilot the ship manually, so I'm going to double left click somewhere in the empty background. There we go, that gets me moving. Control spacebar to stop the ship. Alright. 
how to use the look at function. I'm going to approach. And we've got a lot to go through. You're supplied with something called an afterburner. So just click that on and your ship will consume capacitor energy to go faster. And they want you to loot the wreckage. That opens the box. Click loot all. Let's move on to the next one, which I think is here. Yeah. The tooltip will show you where to go. Now, first off, this is your overview. It's the first of the spreadsheets of the infamous spreadsheets in space. It's a list of everything that's nearby. Right? Uh, that way you don't have to, if something hostile is nearby, you don't have to spin your camera around to trying to figure out where it is. The overview will tell you something exists out there. It's shooting at you. Uh, here's how far away it is. And you can select the object from the overview and then issue a command. Uh, whenever you click on anything in the overview, it appears in the selected item box. Let me make the selected item box bigger. So I can click this last uh, wrecked Galente ship, open the cargo. You have to be within 2,500 meters to open a cargo container in space. Uh, so your ship will get closer to it first of all. Loot all. Uh, let's get this out of the way. Stop my ship. Uh, all right. Next, the warp disruption generator. Let me make this a little bit bigger. And I can expand the name column. There we go. Now, besides clicking on something in the overview and... Oh, right. Target lock. They also want you to orbit and start shooting. And there are also key bindings for a lot of this. Uh, so if you mouse over a button, you can, it might be very hard to see, but that's a letter W next to orbit in that tooltip, meaning W will be the um, orbit key binding. Let me stop my ship because I don't know what else is going on. All right, there should be an enemy showing up soon. Bingo. All right, so orbit, lock target, and start firing. And I'm gonna stop my ship right now. Click, open cargo, stop my ship, because the tutorial's expecting that. There's another circadian seeker somewhere around. By the way, you'll want to right-click the wreck and select save location. It's good for what's known as a safe spot, which is something I'll explain later in this series. Bit. Got to do that. I'll stop my ship again. I think I'm too close uh, because my weapon can work out to a few kilometers. I think one kilometer is too close. I'm going to right click this orbit and set this to a default of 3,000 meters. 
and here we go. Alright, approach the Circadian Seeker orbit. I think I actually forgot to take the metal scraps out of that last wreck, but it's not important. Metal scraps aren't worth very much. doing a steady lift, click, and drag so that I'm looking at the Circadian Seeker, which is not important. My weapons work just fine, no matter what my camera is doing. Guess I'll just zoom out a bit. So, the weapon that I'm using is a, a part of a category of weapons called a turret. Turrets will miss their target for two general reasons. Either the target is too far away, or the target and the shooter are going around each other in circles too fast. Both can be true at the same time. So, when orbiting your target, you do try want to try to make sure that you're not so close that, um, that you can't hit the target because you're circling it too fast. There's a backup warp disruption generator, so I'm going to approach that. I can't target lock it. So, there are three ways to target lock that thing once I'm within range. Left click in the overview, then click the lock target button once I'm in targeting range. Or I can right click and select lock target. There we go, right click, lock target. Or I can control left click the thing in overview. But yeah, the tutorial will have you orbiting the things, uh, at least for this first, very first part, the tutorial will have you orbit things uh, while you're shooting at them, which is usually good practice. But like I said, if you're orbiting too close and too fast, your own guns are going to miss. How you determine how fast that is, I'll cover in another episode. Alright. Now we can actually warp to station, so click on the square icon in overview. There should only be one, and dock. Or you can click uh, over here in the upper left. Warp out and dock at headquarters. Zoom. Bye-bye. And turn on the afterburner again, because your afterburner, it, just in case you need to close the last couple of kilometers to actually dock in the station. All right, let's close this. And time to go to Neocom inventory, redeem items. Let's redeem everything. Yes, that's what I want to do, because that's what you want me to do. Um, let's go to... Just as a matter of personal preference, what I like to do is every station that you can dock in, 
including every player constructed citadel, every player constructed engineering complex. You're going to have your own personal item hanger and your own personal ship hanger. Uh, so let's see. Eve menu, what I like to do, inventory, I'll drag in the ship hanger onto the sidebar on the Neocom bar and the item hanger. And I like to have just as years long personal preference, I'd like to have these on the side. Let me rearrange this window very slightly. There we go. And the main inventory window I will stick up here. Now, Toriel wants you to open a character sheet. Let's drag the skill book you were given. There we go. And you have more items to redeem. Inventory, redeem items. Let's do that. Let's drag in repair systems. Use the mini skill injector, right click, activate, confirm. Uh, let's apply the unallocated skill points we were just given. Normally you generate skill points very slowly over time, so I could have just let those two skills train up over the next hour half hour or something like that, but I don't want to waste your time. The tutorial also does not want to waste your time. Uh, let's see. Alright, so let me open Alt-F by default to open the fitting window. Let me try that again. There we go. They want me to remove this thing and put on this thing. Load it with ammunition. You know what? I don't need this cargo with me. Uh, let's put... Oh, right. The auto repairer. Put the extra ammunition in the cargo hold, because we might need it later. Uh, they want you to undock, but I'm going to instead suggest you take a quick trip to the market window. Which, granted, the game has not quite introduced you yet to this, at this point. One MN afterburner. Because right now you have a civilian afterburner, which is pretty weak. There are seriously no afterburners in station. There were yesterday when I rehearsed this. All right, I'm going to skip ahead to the part of the video where I've taken a trip out to Alentine, uh, gotten a 1MN afterburner, and then come back. All right, I've skipped ahead to the part where I just returned from Alentine. Uh, the reason I had to make that detour is for a time-saving feature. The game starts you off with a module called a Civilian Afterburner which, when you turn it on, it spends some capacitor energy to make your ship go faster, but it's not as strong as the basic one meganewton afterburner one. Or one meganewton afterburner I, because some of the names use Roman numerals. So an afterburner one is significantly better than a civilian afterburner, and that'll save time, especially with some of the stuff that you're going to be asked to do uh, in the tutorials here. So now that I'm here, start approaching. And just as a habit, I want to record this as another safe spot. So control B, safe spot. Let's click submit. I'll explain uh, in a later episode why I'm doing that. And turn on the afterburner. And the game wants you to turn on your repair module, which I'm going to do for one cycle. Uh, 
let me open up my fitting window real quick. I'll expand all the headers here. Okay, good. I'm capacitor stable with everything running. I may as well turn on everything. And this depleted station battery right here is doing environmental damage. Just ignore it and keep going. I think it's timer-based with a pretty long range, so... Now, my shields are still holding. Uh, the damage hasn't bled through to the battle armor yet, and the armor repairer fixes the battle armor. Now, if you want to orbit, you can. Um, it may try to get in close at you. Um, let me take a moment to see if it's worth looting this thing before I move on to kill the other two pirates that have just shown up. Just metal scraps, all right. Keep at range. I'm going to right click this, set a default keep at range distance of. Eh, such to 4,000 meters. My civilian Gatling railgun has an optimal range of 5,280 meters. Meaning that it's not going to miss because of distance just be, um, within 5,280 meters. And it says fall off range within 7380 meters, so I'll have a one half chance to hit a stationary target at 7380 meters. Or at least stationary relative to me. Alright, that guy's a little far away. Let me switch targets. And let me stop my ship so they can actually get within range of me. Or get within my gun's range. Ah, there they are. Oh, you know what? These are just metal scraps. I'm, I don't think we're going to find anything important here. Outside of new player experience, it'll be worthwhile to uh, loot everything that you come across. But for the new player experience, I think it's just metal scraps. So if you just want to rush through it as well yourself, that's an option. You're not missing out on much loot-wise, I think. Cut the afterburner, stop my ship. Uh, I'm gonna orbit this first guy. You know what? My orbit distance is too big. It's too small, rather. I'm gonna make it 4,000 meters. And I was just paid bounty on uh, the pirates I killed earlier.
So you'll notice I have, I am actually taking armor damage now. Turn on the afterburner again. Go get the resource crate. Stop the afterburner. Stop my ship, loot all. And we are done here, so I'm going to click Dock. By the way, using the warp drive to travel from one point to another point in the same solar system requires that you start moving towards the destination at sublight speed. So if you click the dock uh, link on the left-hand side, or you just click on the station and then click dock, but you find that you're bumping into something, like say an asteroid, you'll want to control spacebar to stop your ship and then double left click off to the side so that you get around whatever obstacle is in your way. The warp path in front of you doesn't need to be clear, uh, provided that you're not actually going to bump into it before you go into warp. You can go straight through solid planets while in warp. All right, uh, here's my inventory. Left click, shift left click, drag that all down. There, transferred. They want you to open the wallet. There you go. They want you to open the market. They want you to search for civilian data analyzer blueprint. I'll just type civilian data. There you go. That's the only match. Right click, buy this. Purchase. There we go. Uh, open the industry window. Or you can just right-click the blueprint and use blueprint. Game's lagging a little bit. Let me drag this in. There we go. This is going to take 1 minute 55 seconds. All right, so we have to wait on that. There's no option around it, but it's gonna give you other things to do. So it's gonna give you another gift, redeem that, right click, open. All right, done, finish. Uh, let's open the character sheet again. Uh, they want you to start training. And they also want you to add level two. And I think level three as well. And they also want you to drag in Galente Destroyer. Oh, no, I'm sorry, I'm wrong. They want you to train Q Galente Frigate up to level four. So, there we go. Uh, next, they want you to open up the Plex Vault. No, let's do it from inventory. Here we go. Flex Vault. Right, let's open up the industry window again. How close is this to being finished? Click on the Jobs tab. Four, three, two, one. Here we go. Finally, deliver. All 
All right, uh, let's open up the fitting window. Fit the civilian datal analyzer. All right, that's ready. We can undock. Uh, So click on set destination. They want you to turn on the autopilot, but I'm going to discourage that right away because, yeah, hold on. I'll do this once. I'll turn on the autopilot. And if you let the autopilot fly your ship, then every Stargate and station you warp to, you're going to drop out of warp 15 kilometers short of target. There is no way to change that if you're letting the autopilot fly your ship. So I don't advise ever actually doing this unless you absolutely do not care as to whether or not you're going to be blown up along the way. Which is a circumstance that sometimes does come up. But yeah, letting the autopilot fly your ship. Uh, we're dropping out of warp here. And bingo, there's the Stargate, 15 kilometers away. So I don't advise ever actually allowing the autopilot to fly your ship for you. If I just selected warp to zero, I'd be right on top of the Stargate and I can jump immediately. Now I actually have to twiddle my thumbs and wait Good thing I have an afterburner. So when the tutorial advises you to use the autopilot, just turn on the autopilot, turn off the autopilot. That'll make the tutorial system happy, and you can just go on a little bit faster. location. Alright. burn over to the acceleration gate. Activate gate, but your ship has to get within 2,500 meters to do that. the info shard. And turn on the afterburner. Because your modules will turn off, generally speaking, your module, most of your modules will turn off every time you go into a warp. Um, there are some exceptions, such as uh, damage resistance modules. This is going to be a long slog, so definitely you're going to want a real afterburner rather than a civilian afterburner for this. Uh, for the purposes of the video, I'm not going to waste your time. Let's skip ahead. I've skipped ahead to where I'm now within 12 kilometers. I'm going to target lock. Uh, right click the default to change this to 2,000 meters. I want to keep at range 2,000 meters. Right, now, here, yeah, that's not what I meant to do. Not mean to shoot it. Start the analyzer. And it's going to introduce you to the hacking minigame. I'm five steps away from the system core. Four steps, three steps, two steps, one step. Uh, I got lucky. I just happened to stumble into it. But the numbers indicate how far away you are from your objective. Uh, loot the info shard. Loot all. Stop my ship. Turn off the afterburner. Alright. 
warp to location. And you know what? Save this as a safe spot for later use. safe spot. Uh, they've got another site they want you to go to. Let's warp to that. Click in the acceleration gate. As soon as you can, activate gate. There you go. direction because they're going to have you move that way anyway. Uh, right click this thing, approach, turn on the afterburner. And bumping into things will slow me down and I have to go all the way over there anyway, so I'm going to double left click now. This will be close enough for the tutorial. And I bumped into something anyway. Right click this, approach. What I may do is just cut out some of the periods of time where the ship is in warp uh, just to save time on the video itself. If I make that decision, you'll probably have noticed I've been doing that skipping already. Stop my ship. Set destination. Click on the yellow brick stargate. Click the jump button, your ship will warp to the Stargate first, then jump. Oh, let me save this a safe spot. There we go. The auto the tutorials expect me to turn on the autopilot. I'm gonna turn that on and off, as I mentioned before. I don't want to cover 15 kilometers at sublight speed, thank you. That 120 kilometers is bad enough. And click the dock. All right, let me close this. They have more gifts for you to redeem. Redeem everything. Yes, this is what I want to do. Uh, so, right, they want you to right click, leave ship. Right click on the Incursus, assemble ship. Right click, uh, make active. Oh, hold on. One thing at a time. Uh, I did not finish Galente Forget One. Okay. Um, I'm going to apply unallocated skill points, but I only want to do it to complete this first level of Galente Forget. There. That's done. Now I go back to Spaceship Command, and I'll go to... Now I'll queue that back up again. Uh, I guess I'll go to gunnery and put in Q. I guess I'll put in small hybrid turret as well. 
just so my guns do a little more damage eventually. And one more level of Galente Frigate. There we go. Now I can right-click, make active. I have a personal policy of not spending all of my unallocated skill points first. I'd like to keep some in reserve. Uh, repackage your old ship. Right-click. Uh, repackage. Alright. And they want you to fit your new ship. So both click once in the background, hit Alt to F, that opens up the fitting window. Um, they're expecting specific modules to show up. So the civilian afterburner, the civilian stasis webifier, uh, the repair module, uh, and finally a weapon. There. So now that I've satisfied the tutorial system, I'm going to remove the civilian afterburner, put on the real afterburner. Uh, shift, left click and drag a 125mm railgun onto the other. And you know what? Let me view market details, see if I can get another one of these railguns. Can I afford that? You know what? I'll get by with one civilian weapon. It'll be fine. Uh, load ammunition. Fill the cargo. Right click, stack all. Now load the cargo. Alright. Now it's telling you to set destination and then undock and travel to the gate. There's one thing I'm going to have you do that they don't tell you to do here. Uh, Right-click on your ship, select Ensure. Uh, click Yes, and go for the most expensive insurance package that you can, because the ship is going to blow up. I would go with Platinum, but I can't afford Platinum. I don't have enough ISK for it, uh, so I'm just going to go with Gold, uh, Ensure that, and then Undock. Now, a lot of the solar systems in New Eden are part of what's called known space. Hold on. And they're linked together through the Stargate network. So, Sistavere has three Stargates, which only connect to three other solar systems. But those other solar systems, in turn, have other Stargate connections. Uh, so this destination is three jumps away. I have to go through a Stargate, then another Stargate, then another Stargate uh, to get to where uh, this next fight is going to be. So when you set a destination by whatever means, you'll see in the upper left that you have a route plotted, and your next Stargate in that route will be highlighted yellow in the overview. So I look at the overview, and the one that's highlighted yellow, that's the one I should jump through. Not any of these others. That way you're not going to get lost while you're navigating through the Stargate network. Let's skip ahead. Alright, I've just entered Sortet. I'm going to warp to location. Let's skip ahead through this warp. Spatial Rift, activate gate. You have to get within two and a half kilometers. Let's hit the afterburner. All right, and here we are, a Drifter Hive. Start shooting something. I'm also going to turn on the stasis webifier. Of 
and it's going to tell you there's a capital ship that needs to be intercepted. There's the Glente Nanazu. Apparently it got infested or something. So approach it, turn on the afterburner. And while you're passing by, let's shoot the Circadian Seeker. Now, by, now, I grouped two of my weapons, so that's the two in the red box to indicate that there's two of those modules that are firing together. So the second high slot is empty. But I can make use of that, uh, that interface key button. So what I'm going to do is left-click and drag this module onto the F2 button. The Stasis Webifier is... I should probably explain modules while I'm drifting along here. There are three types of modules. High power, mid power, and low power. The guns are high power. The afterburner and stasis webifier are mid power. The armor repairer is a low power module. Those are merely the names that CCP has given to these things. Don't read too much into it, but a high slot module, a high power module can only go in a high slot a mid-power module can only go in a mid-slot, a low-power module can only go in a low-slot. But for the purposes of key bindings, you can rearrange these. I can left-click and drag the civilian stasis weapifier onto the third high-slot key binding. It's still actually just a mid-slot module that hasn't changed. It's just that I'm going to activate it now with what's normally a high-slot key binding. I have to get within 10 kilometers. Alright, good. And start shooting. I'm damage, doing damage to this thing, more NPCs are showing up. They were a little out of my range, though, so I'm going to ignore them until the next pass. I'm moving pretty quickly, so their missiles aren't doing as much damage to me. Alright, I'm going to double left click towards the center of the, that giant's donut, the drifter hive. Control R to reload my guns, the ones that need ammunition. Uh, let's see. Left click anywhere on the giant donut, click approach. There we go. Click the drifter high. No, oh, it's too far away. I'm going to right click this thing and orbit, uh, let's say, 2,500 meters this time. Alright, I've skipped ahead to where with, I'm within target locking range. That was not the one I wanted to shoot. range of those two other drifters, so I'm going to shoot the hive instead, which has a lot of hit points, so if I can't hit anything else, I'm going to hit this thing. Lock, right-click, unlock, let me lock these others.
click, unlock. Is there a key binding for that control shift to unlock? All right. Blow up some of these other circadian seekers. They're worth bound. They've got bounties on their heads. They're since you're just starting off, they're probably worth killing. I'm gonna right-click this wreck and orbit the wreck instead. That'll put me closer. That'll keep me generally closer to everything else that's going on around here. that I'm able to deal damage to these enemies and they're not able to do damage to me aside from the fact that they're tutorial entities is because they're also cruiser sized and they're using cruiser sized weapons but cruiser sized weapons tend to have problems trying to hit frigate sized targets like me especially if frigate sized targets are moving so the fact that I'm orbiting something uh, makes me hard to hit the story, the real story is actually a little more complicated than that. It does depend on directions and such. Stop my ship. Control B. I'm going to put in my wreck. You'll see why in a moment. Now, normally, when you're ejected in your capsule, you should immediately try to warp out to something. But there's a warp disruption field in the area. So, just wait to explode. By the way, this is why I had you insure the ship. ship hanger and the item hanger again. Uh, they're giving you more gifts to redeem. Let's do that. Open the Galente Inception package. Open container. Uh, they give you all this stuff. Very good. Uh, right click, they tell you to assemble it. Right click, make active. They want you to fit the ship. And they advise fitting the mining lasers. Uh, the afterburner. They actually give you a real afterburner at this point, And a repair module. They tell you to open the agency window. Yeah, okay, okay, let's do that. The game's lagging for some reason. There we go. Click on the Resource Wars. They'll talk about it. Click on one of the Career Path Agents. They'll talk about that. And then set a destination to either of them. For the purposes of this series, I'm going to tell you to set destination to the Career Path Agents. Um, there should only be one such solar system that it'll send you to, depending on your race and your school. And then they'll tell you to undock. Um, let's actually do something different at this point. Uh, I'm going to diverge from the built-in tutorial here. I'm going to activate the noob ship that was automatically given to me. Uh, make active. Let me open up the fitting window again. Uh, let me strip the fitting from this. 
Let me strip the fitting from this. And I'm going to do something different here. Um, I will fit on the afterburner and the repair module. And you know what? Let's stick on the mining laser upgrade. Um, just so that it's not taking up space in the cargo hold. I'll put the miners onto this thing. I'll explain why in a moment. Uh, it doesn't have the CPU, that's fine, it's just for the purposes of carrying it. Um, you'll need at least the minerals, uh, you'll want to bring your Incursus blueprint along. Um, if you can, just bring everything along with you. There shouldn't be all that much stuff, really, which is why I'm using the Villator rather than the Venture. Uh, the Venture here is a mining frigate. It's only got a 50 cubic meter general cargo hold, much smaller than the ve uh, than the Velator, but it's got a much bigger cargo hold that only holds asteroid ore. So it's good, very good for asteroid mining. But there's something else that I want to do that needs more cargo space. You'll remember that I did a control B, I typed in my wreck, I pushed return because I knew I was about to explode. So I'm what I've done now is I've gone to people and places, the places tab, I've looked uh, here's my rec in Sortet. Right click. I'm going to set destination to that instead. All right. Then I'm going to undock and travel over there. All right. I'm in space. Let me skip ahead to where I jump into Sortet. I've skipped ahead to the part where I've now jumped into the Sorted solar system. I'm right-clicking the empty background in space. Personal locations, my wreck, because that's what I named it. Warp to location within zero meters. Now, you might be wondering, why are you carrying all of your stuff back into that hazardous place? There are lots of drifters there. Uh, you're going to get blown up again. Nope, it's going to be all clear. You'll see. Because now that the uh, experience is over, the game doesn't actually need to simulate any of that stuff anymore. So as far as the game is concerned, this is just turned into empty space. The wrecks that were created uh, still remain, and they'll stick around for two hours. Um... But other than that, it's just empty space. Uh, and look, some of my stuff actually survived. I don't, don't really care about the civilian stasis web of fire, but at least the railgun and the ammunition survived. It, it's random what will and will not survive. So if you can get back to your wreck, it's worth checking. Uh, now, you may have heard of something called salvaging, which is something that I'll cover in a later episode. Um, but for the new player experience, I don't advise trying to bother with salvaging, because all you're going to get out of it is uh, metal scraps. Plus, it takes a while to salvage all these wrecks, given that you've got only level 3 salvaging. So it's probably not worthwhile. So that concludes the new player experience. Um, when we pick up next... Hold on, I should probably tell you. Once you're here, go back to the agency. The suggested tab. Click on any of the career path agents. Set destination. There you go. So, I'm going to end the episode here. When, we pick, when I pick up again next episode, I will already be docked in the station in Quellanon. And I will guide you through some... Oh! I almost forgot. Your body from when you were killed is still floating there. Right-click on that. Let me scoop that to cargo hold. So when I pick up next episode, I will already be docked in Clevelon. I'm Seamus Dunahoo of Eve University. Thank you for watching.